Well, hello, friends <clears throat> and beautiful people. Hi, hi, hi. It is Catherine, Elevated Consciousness Coach. Hello. Today, in this masterclass, we're talking about something very special. We are talking about the four key elements of creating your desired reality. And I'm going to get right into it in a minute. I'm going to see if anyone is going to join us live and I'm going to share this in my Momentum of Flow group. If you're here, please say hello. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Mm, and it is, what is today? The 5th of January. Here we are in this new year. Many of us are, hi Patty. <clears throat> pondering reinvention, <laughs> taking our lives in a new direction, yes. And so this is a very timely talk. Hello, Eleanor. Hi. Hi, ladies. So, you know, <clears throat> I don't believe in gatekeeping in the sense of keeping information from people uh, that really should be made available to everyone. <laughs> so um, I'm really going to keep this as simple and, as, and explain it as elegantly and simply as I possibly can so that this information is usable to you. Um, full disclosure, yes, I am promoting two different programs at this moment in time. One is Momentum of Flow. That goes on through May of 2023. This is changing your energy around the fear of having what you want, the desire of having what you want, and changing the physiology of your entire being so that you can process fear and desire. This is a very innovative, um, very powerful program, and it goes through May of 2023. And I also have coming up my eight-week program, Women Walking the Phoenix Path. That is going to start on February 8th, 2023. Um, this is for women who are <laughs> in this place of they want to burn it all down. They are going through a major life change, maybe even a major life crisis. Um, you're realizing that things can get, cannot go on business as usual. Um, you want to start over, not from scratch, from experience. You want to take the hard-earned wisdom that you have from your life up until now, and you want to apply what's left. When you sift through the rubble of either burning down, collapsing the old foundation of you, you want to rebuild. You want to renew. You want to reinvent. This is for women who are very committed to transformation in the highest sense of it, and that is reinvention. So this program's not for everybody, but if you're feeling that, if you are a woman who is feeling the need to reinvent, um, I can tell you from experience that I'm, I'm quite an expert at it. I have had to reinvent myself several times. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Jante. Jante is going to be in Phoenix Path with us. I'm very excited about that. Um, I've had to reinvent myself several times. Um, I've worn many hats in this life. I would definitely call myself a Renaissance woman. I have been everything from you know, someone who worked in the cosmetics industry and uh, skincare to being a bartender to working every possible job there is to work in hospitality to creating my own business to being a hypnotherapy um, teacher to being a, a Reiki mentor teacher to uh, then having my own brick and mortar business, to now having my business be completely online and being an elevated consciousness coach, living in different places all over the United States and outside of the contiguous 48, um, that being Alaska and Hawaii, and having to reinvent myself time and time again is something that you know I'm pretty used to. And whether you are reinventing out of necessity or out of a genuine desire to do life differently, what I'm going to share with you today is going to help you either way. It applies in, in, in both, you know, experiences of life, okay? So like I said, I don't believe 
in uh <laughs> hi stacy hello i hope we'll see you tomorrow it's my treat um for the luncheon so I, I think you know what i'm talking about um so we are you know in this this very interesting pivotal time as women because not only do we have options available to us for reinventing that probably have not expressed themselves in this way on this planet before but we also are coming to a place where we, we realize we have been underselling ourselves on our own potential. Okay? And that's just a fact. You know, I'm not going to try to sugarcoat it. Um, I'm not going to try to, to, you know, soothe you. Because I, in an attempt to soothe myself through this hard knowledge and... Uh, difficult thing to face that I've been underselling myself and my own potential and had been for many years of my life. Um, any attempt to soothe it or put a bomb or a band-aid on it was just an attempt to cope with it or manage it. I'd rather look it straight in the face and say, okay, I accept this is where I'm at. Now what the fuck do I do? Okay. So I'm, I'm coming to you with this hard won knowledge, um, wisdom, that has come from my own resilience, that has come from my own experience of reinventing myself time and again. And I want to share with you, no matter if you're, if you're coming at this from necessity or you're coming at it from a place of, I really want to do life differently. I know I can do life differently. I see this potential now. I couldn't before. And so I'm ready. I want you to be able to understand that you can take this stuff here and start working with this today, now, right after you stop watching this video. Okay, and I invite you to watch this video a few times. So this is going to be available on my YouTube channel. If you're on my email list, congratulations, because you'll receive this replay. I'll send it out tonight. Um, if you're in my Momentum of Flow program, I'm streaming this in there right now. If you're in my Dial of the Divine Disruptor program, it is streaming in there right now. So there's plenty of places to watch this, okay? So no gatekeeping on this one. I'm not going to hold anything back here. This is information that should be available to all of us. If you want to work with this and have a powerful guide who is a master of reinvention to help you work with these concepts, then either Momentum of Flow or Women Walking the Phoenix Path are for you. Our next call in Momentum of Flow is on the 9th. That is next Monday, this coming Monday of January. And then Phoenix Path, Women Walking the Phoenix Path starts on February 8th. Okay. So there are four key elements, four key elements to creating your desired reality, to reinvention, okay? We can swap out or interchange those definitions here today on this call. Creating your desired reality is finally saying, you know, I'm willing to reinvent myself from my place of truth and authenticity instead of adaptability, okay? So let's clear that up. We've, we've either created a foundation of our lives, and many of us have, where we've adapted to external circumstances, meaning we thought life outside of us was a certain way, people outside of us were a certain way, we had to conduct ourselves in the outer world in a certain way, and so we adapted our personality to suit that. Reinvention is not that. Creating your desired reality is not adaptability. It is working with the truth of you and your authenticity, meaning when you are adapting to life, you see life as coming at you. <laughs> kind of like a, a hurtling freight train coming at you. And you only feel like you have a few choices and you have to, you know, have to decide very quickly what to do. A lot of us are coming off of this hangover of this experience or perception of reality. Yes. Okay. If that resonates with you. Please comment here. And I'd love to see your comments and questions. So please feel free to add them here. We are remembering who we truly are. Absolutely, Stacy. I could not agree with you more. And for some of us, it's terrifying. For some of us, it's exciting. And everything in between on that spectrum, right? And so when we are coming at life, rather than seeing life as coming at us, right? But I don't want to be adversarial about it. I don't want to frame it necessarily as something that is, you know, me against life, you against life. Let's not do that. We've had enough of that on this planet, yeah? It's pretty toxic. When you are coming to terms with the truth and authenticity of you, when you create your desired reality from that aspect, you are merging with life. 
it is more harmonious. It is not something that you're coming at life with, with the sense of hustle or force or effort. It's rather, I accept myself, good and bad, all the parts that I like, all the parts that I don't like. I've come to this place of wisdom where I can create space for all of that within me and accept it and love it all, love myself through it all. And I can see what life brings me today. And I know because I have such a profound awareness of my truth, my authenticity of self, what makes me tick, what I love, who I am, who I recognize myself to truly be now, that whatever life throws at me, I got it. And not only do I got it, I'm going to rise above whatever feels adversarial or challenging to me, whatever issue presents itself to me. And not in the sense that we feel like, yet again, there's hurdles to overcome. Yet again, we have to triumph or be victorious over something. Let's move away from that paradigm of thought that life is something to be conquered, okay? There's plenty in the coaching industry who would like to hold on to that old paradigm, that old earth paradigm of like, let's hustle and let's get out there and get it, feel the fear and do it anyway. You will find that the more you listen to me, that is not my message. You will find that the more you connect with me and listen to the things that I have to say, that is not what I invite you to, um, to embrace life with. Okay, and you can't embrace life from that perspective, in my estimation. You can embrace life with the sense of no matter what is happening, no matter what is happening, there is a chance that something is happening here that is for my greatest and highest benefit. There's something that life is inviting me to see that maybe I wasn't willing to see before, couldn't see before, didn't want to see before, was going la 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 before, okay? That gift in the garbage is waiting for me. If <laughs> I'm just willing to, to interface with this with the fullness of me, okay? So I'm going to talk about these three key elements first because they're very important. But then there is the fourth element, which is the prologue to all of these. And what I think is probably the most important. Uh, Stacy says, women have been programmed not to value ourselves. Absolutely. In a world that was created by the crumbling, immature, masculine power structure, women are the embodiment of life wisdom and beauty. Indeed we are. And men can be too. If they can embrace that heroes gamos, that balance within them of the divine masculine and divine feminine respectively, regardless of gender, we can all be embodiments of our greatest selves without a doubt. And I believe that. I wouldn't have been doing this for 20 years plus if I did not believe that, <laughs> that we as humans are capable of beautiful things. And I see it all the time. I see it all the time. It just, it doesn't, it doesn't sell newspapers and it doesn't make people watch the news if we're talking about feel good stories. Sensationalism rules the day, you know, whatever keeps us in fear, whatever, you know, keeps us feeling like, God, we, we have to be striving towards something better instead of seeing where we are already doing better. And that fills up much of a sense, more of a sense of hope within us than feeling like, well, we're over here. We need to be over there. There's plenty of us showing up in our full embodiment kind of carrying the torch of what unity consciousness is all about, doing right for ourselves and for the highest and greatest good of all. There's many of us out there. And I choose to focus on those people. But I really want to focus on women now because we're the ones who are coming from this sense of our value is something that is a, a trait that is external to us. Meaning someone else is deciding, approving of, who we are, is deciding how valuable we are. You know, thus that $30 billion cosmetic industry where, you know, we're always striving to look better, to defy aging and all that other horse shit that we have, you know, shoved down our throats as women all the time, that we're not good enough as we are, while the messaging is there, well, you're not good enough as you are, but do all the things, wear all the hats, play all the roles, and in fact, do more but we still don't value you for it. And we are, we have to accept that this has been where we're at. We don't have to accept that this is where we are right now. We don't have to accept this anymore. We don't have to sit and take it, but we have to be the ones that step up and say, I call bullshit. So where does it all start? 
because that's part of reinvention, right? Being able to speak truth to power, maybe in ways you never have before, that might be a, one translation of your reinvention for you. So where do you start? Where do you start with all of this? The first key element I want to talk about, awareness. Without self-awareness, you can't even begin. You can't even really begin this process of transformation, of, of radical personal change, of reinvention, and renewing yourself in light of who you would like to be. Awareness is everything. If you don't have any recognition that there is something that doesn't fit, that something is not harmonious, that something is out of balance, well, you're not going to show up and try to correct that imbalance, correct? So I get a lot of questions, and in fact, I got one on my TikTok channel last night <clears throat> because I was talking about reinvention and one of the comments I got was, you know, I like intellectually, I get it, but I, I cannot grapple with my subconscious. I don't, it, it eludes me. First of all, the only way that you have it set up as an idea in your head that your subconscious is eluding you is if you're not giving it any time to speak to you. Okay. We have an addiction. We have many addictions, <laughs> especially in, in, Western society. But one of our worst addictions is the constant need to be busy all the time, to constantly be productive, to be doing. And a lot of it, if we're really honest, is a toxic trait where we're trying to avoid life. We're trying to avoid what's really going on in our inner reality. We're trying to avoid uh, looking at our patterns. We're avoiding looking at where we don't have harmony in life. We're avoiding looking at where we might have old childhood wounds and trauma and how it is eroding away our sense of joy, our sense of trust in ourselves and in the world. We're not willing to look at it. And we're willing to do just about anything so we don't have to look at it. And I, I fully cop to the fact that, you know, I, I'm a brilliant, brilliant procrastinator because I always have a million projects like at the ready. Um, I can clean the house. I can, you know, go on a massive hike. I don't always think that's a distraction, although sometimes I can use it as one. Um, you know, I can start overhauling my closets. I, I can do any number of things. Uh, you know, binge watch a Netflix show. Uh, just about anything. It's scroll through social media so that I don't have to look at something that I know needs to be done. And to one degree or another, we all have this level of addiction. And when we are unwilling to be with the stillness, that says something very profound. To the degree that you feel that unwillingness, that resistance to be with the stillness, meaning just sitting yourself the fuck down, turning off and tuning out all distractions, and just sitting with your own thoughts and just letting them letting the thoughts, the carousel of thought, just run its course and just be with it. So many of us are unwilling to do that. So when I hear people say, well, my subconscious eludes me, and I say, well, where are you not making time to converse with it? Where are you not making the time to connect with it? Again, that's a statement that implies it's the subconscious's fault. It's not. It is part of you that you're not willing to sit with and be in stillness with, okay? So awareness. Awareness is everything. <laughs> I love my carousel of thoughts, <laughs> right? And it's, it's interesting when we can go into that stillness. And the more you do it, you get more adept at being. And, and Jante, I know that you can corroborate this, that when we're good at being in the stillness, when we're good at being the compassionate observer of those thoughts and have a curiosity and a kind of neutrality about them rather than latching onto them and attaching them, attaching to them when one thought catches you by surprise and you're like, oh, that's me. That's me. That's true about me. It's only true if you allow it to be. Why are you latching on or attaching to this thought saying that this is, this is who I am. This is my identity. Who says? That may have been a, you know, a markedly important 
part of your identity up until now. But here's the thing that I'm always saying to my clients, that you are under no obligation to be the same person today that you were yesterday. And the first thing is, that's going to change that is your awareness. So when we create the space to have the awareness, we're allowing ourselves to be in the stillness. We can be a compassionate observer of those thoughts in our head. Let them run. Let them run. Let them go fucking crazy. And sometimes when you can sit with it and you hear the ridiculousness, you let that resounding ridiculousness echo in your own head and you're like, that's not me. It's interesting that I might still think that or that thought might still be there. And I've, I've done a lot of self-work. I've done a lot of shadow work on myself. And I still ruminate on or, or have some things in my head that I'm like, that's still there? Isn't that interesting? But that only means when I'm in my compassionate observer aspect, that there's something else for me to look at. And there's another, another layer that needs to be peeled away on that onion. And that's okay. Because our work of truly uncovering who we are in our highest spiritual truth, it's an ongoing process. And we need to be okay with that. Aloha, 17 minutes in, but I'm catching you live. Hello, Lorna. It's so nice to have you here. Thanks for being here. So Eleanor says, I think that's one of the biggest revelations, but it is super challenging. It can be, but maybe you want to stop telling yourself that, right? Because there's your label. I'll do it, but it's challenging. So where, where, where could, is there room to maybe alleviate yourself of that but? I'll do it. There's going to be something for me to find there. All right, that feels a little easier, it feels a little lighter. And the thing is, we get to reframe it. So you get to reinvent, Eleanor, how you look at that, right? And it is not a bypassing, it is a reframing. It is a reframing in such a way where you're still gonna do the work, but why do you have to make it something you have to suffer through? You don't, right? All right, so there's awareness. Where are you not creating the room? for self-recognition? Where are you trying to cope, manage, avoid, compensate for this truth that's ready to be unveiled to you? And here's the thing, your, your subconscious, your super conscious, your intuitive self, none of these aspects of you play hard to get. Nope, they do not. They're not hard to find, <laughs> you know, they're not eluding you. That's a victim mentality. Um, people who say, I can't connect with my higher self, even. Where are you not creating the space? None of these aspects of you are trying to play hide, hide and seek or hard to get. Okay? So we have to create the space. We have to be sovereign. We have to exert what I'm going to talk about later, the right use of willpower in order to create the desired reality that we want. We are in charge. Nothing outside of us. And you might even, when you say things like my subconscious eludes me, aren't you putting that outside of you? Meaning that's not part of my sovereign domain. If it was, I'd have say so. Make it part of your sovereign domain. That's up to you. Otherwise, it's a victim mentality. And you'll notice I don't really tread softly when I talk about these things. I will not coddle you. I will not handhold. My, my work is for women who are ready to do the work and ready to step up and ready to see these things and are ready to say, Okay, you're right, this stops here. Okay, I'm not a hand holder. So if you're looking for me to lob softballs at you here, you need to find another channel. <laughs> Sorry. Um, labels suck, they limit us. And so often they are self-imposed and self-created labels, okay? That's just, that's what it is. The only label I will sign up to spirituality is mystic because it is broad and vast and encompasses lots of the shizit I do. Yeah. And you can, you can work with defining your reality, you know, giving some concretization to your reality by, by using words. That's what we do. That's how we communicate here in 3D Earth as humans. But be careful of where your labels create the limits of your experience. Okay. Second thing, you got the awareness, you know how to create it, choice, choice. Now that you have the awareness, what are you going to do with it? 
What are you going to do with it? Are you going to take this new, new light, this new information that you have about yourself and make a higher and better choice faced with similar circumstances, similar events, dealing with similar people that maybe you have in the past and choosing higher and better than before? Okay? Choice. Because that is part of your sovereign domain. And I, you know, I, I've been having interesting debates lately, lately with some people, um, colleagues, I wouldn't necessarily call them friends because we debate a lot and that's fine. I'm, I'm open to debate. I don't need everybody to agree with things that I'm saying. In fact, don't, because that's far more interesting for me <laughs> if you don't. And then I, you know, I get to be more of a critical thinker and bring more light to what I'm saying and, and bring a better foundation. Um, and that only helps me as a teacher. And when people disagree with you, it allows us to remain in a place of teachability. So we can be teachers, but we have, we have to also remain teachable. We need to remain supple and flexible in our thinking to allow different viewpoints in, right? And so I do like debate, as long as it's healthy and respectful. Um, and it drives the idea forward to make it more accessible to people. That's always the bottom line for me. So, you know, predeterminism versus sovereign choice. And some would argue that we don't have free will here. We absolutely do. And I will stand behind this. And from the, the work that I've done through my, my spirit team, my spirit guides over many years, we do have free choice here. And that is often why we don't have ancestors, our spirit team members intervene on our behalf because that interferes with our sense of free will. That is our sovereign domain here because we are the keepers of 3D. Every dimensional realm has keepers. Humans are the keepers of 3D. That means, what does that mean? That means that we have the ultimate say so. We say what comes and goes here. Yes. Mm -hmm. We make a collective agreement through the hive mind of the 3D human family of how things are going to go as reality. That what we collectively agree upon is reality. Okay. So on a personal level, each one of us contributes to the collective by making a sovereign choice. That is how we contribute to the collective hive mind of the, the group think. Okay. So when we are making a choice, if you want to be in the highest service of yourself and of the collective, how do you choose higher and better than you did before? And I always, this is my baseline. This is how I, when I'm faced with a challenge, something I feel like I'm suffering or struggling through, I put it in this framework, in this perspective. I call it the God choice. What is highest and best for me benefits the highest and best good for all and is the least amount of resistance for all involved. Always and ever, it's going to be a path of love. Okay. Lorna says, yes, doing the shadow work again to find the pathway to what am I doing with all this? Yes, right? How does this all fit together, right? And we, we, it's wonderful when we're asking those questions, right? It's wonderful because we want to see the big picture. We want to do something with it that's productive and is beneficial, not just for ourselves, and, but for the planet, right? That is what feeds the shift towards dimensional um, higher consciousness, towards unity consciousness, towards Christed consciousness, however you want to frame it or call it. So the God choice, when you're employing that, what you're really doing is looking at your situation through the lens of love. And you're looking at the situation through your highest God self aspect. You could call it your oversoul, which is like the highest version of your higher self. Um, you could call it whatever you like. Um, I don't use the terminology higher self anymore. I use God self for everything because that implies to me that I am God in a body because I am. I'm God in a body. I'm one aspect, one zero point of consciousness that is source itself. I am the entire spectrum of consciousness experiencing itself through the lens of Catherine currently and for a blip, <laughs> for just a blip, because we're here for such a short time. But I don't think that that discounts or degrades 
or makes lesser light of the power that I hold and the power that I am. And you shouldn't either. And I don't like to say should, but I invite you to maybe think about that for yourself as well. That in that sense, there are no small decisions. In that sense, every choice, every decision you make is a micro decision that leads to that bigger picture that Lorna's talking about here. How does it all fit? If you're looking at each choice and decision that you make through the lens of what's the highest and best choice here in this God choice framework, the highest and best choice for me, the highest and best choice that serves the collective of all and with the least amount of resistance for all involved. Hmm. Well, that changes shit <laughs> in a really good way. So when I look at choice, when I look at making a decision, I weigh that. And you know what that means? That means that I got to take a second. That means I got to take a second. That means that I'm really good at, you know, breathing in and out and really being in my stillness, even if that stillness is five seconds, being with that stillness long enough to weigh that and say, how does this fit into this framework, into this paradigm of the God choice? All right then I can maybe see this decision I was going to make rashly and abruptly and maybe from a place of my ego doesn't really fit into that framework or paradigm. So choice. Now that you have awareness, how are you going to make a higher and better choice than you did before? And you have that freedom. Doesn't matter that you would have made a different choice yesterday. It doesn't matter that you would have made a different choice 10 minutes ago. None of that fucking matters. The past is just a memory. Now is all you have. Now is all you have. Even when you're thinking about, I'll be happy in the future, that doesn't matter either. That is unwritten. It is a ghost land. All you have is now. That's it. That's all you have. So your choice in the face of the great abyss of the now is very significant. Okay? Vibration. If you are in a place of awareness, recognizing yourself fully, okay, and making a higher choice for yourself with that level of awareness, you are going to change your vibration. If you are making a higher and better choice in the moment, and you're making higher and better choices all the time, you can bet dollars to donuts, you are going to be in a higher vibration. You're going to occupy a different spectrum or bandwidth of consciousness. That's a given. That's a given. And so if you're putting that, what I call this trifecta of transformation together of awareness, choice, and vibration to the best of your ability, and it doesn't mean you're going to be perfect at this at the outset. Becoming a master of reinvention is like how you become a master of anything else with practice, with dedication, with applied attention and focus, with everything that you are, meaning bringing the full energy of you to the table. Awareness, choice, and vibration, this beautiful trifecta of transformation. That is those three key elements that start building towards reinvention. And reinvention could very much be described as being in a new vibration of you. And is it even a new vibration of you? It might feel new to you. But in reality, it is your highest spiritual truth. And it's all you really are. It's just that you're first starting to recognize it. You're first starting to have a glimpse of it. You're coming to know it in this 3D avatar of you, finally. And it's never too late, okay? I love the feel of God's self. Also really like the sound of Oversoul. Yeah, I do too. Um... So awareness, choice, and vibration. So when we are talking about occupying a higher vibration, moving towards unity consciousness, being able to shift our reality in a much more positive and beneficial way, you're going to have to, to give up something. You're going to have to give up the old identity of you. Because if you're really honest with yourself, if you have this awareness, and you're choosing to be in a higher vibration, and you're willing to make higher and better choices to ensure that elevated vibration, that means that something's got to give way. Otherwise, it's this constant sense of being at war with yourself, this inner conflict 
And we don't have to suffer through that. But many of us do because we're not willing to give up the old version of self that could not be in this vibration because it was holding too many disharmonious, unloving, unkind thoughts about ourself, about other people, and about reality as a whole. Part of your awareness is recognizing that, that patterning, that patterning that allowed you to create that former foundation. Maybe it's still that foundation of you and you want to come out of this and build a new foundation for yourself. By the way, this is what Women Walking the Phoenix Path is all about. You're recognizing that this former foundation of self was built on something that allowed you to adapt to the world, meaning you catered your entire way of being to a, a way of, of, of looking at the world that is outside of you. Okay? Instead of feeling like, you know, you're moving through the world, I invite you, when you start to think about reinventing yourself and creating a new foundation, the world moves through you because you're creating enough room within you to have this lens of perspective that you can feel it all. You can feel it all, all the love, all the shadow. We have the space for this. And you can be sovereign enough to say, I can feel it all, but I don't have to be undone by any of it. This is mastery. This is, you talk about emotional intelligence. That's what this sounds like. That's what this is, okay? When we are in this place of recognizing that if I want all these things, I want to move into this higher elevation of my consciousness. I want to be in this different vibration of self. I want to be in a place where I can resonate with more joy, more bliss, being present in my life. And even in those moments that show me contrast to all of that, I can still accept it. I can still let it flow through me. I can still let the world move through me, but I don't have to be undone by any of it. This brings us to the fourth key element, which I think is the most important one. Willingness. Yes, Stacy. So those three elements that I went through, awareness, choice, and vibration. This is what I call the trifecta of transformation. Without these things, you cannot truly reinvent yourself. Not in the way that I'm talking about it here, okay? And having reinvented myself many times, as if you're joining late, that's what I talked about at the beginning of this call, that whether you're reinventing yourself out of necessity or choice, these are the same things that are gonna work for you whether you're coming from either level of experience. But the fourth key element here which I think is the most important one and isn't talked about nearly enough in my estimation, is willingness. The willingness to give up the part of you that is at odds with this higher vibration you want to occupy. <laughs> I, I created a little quote a little while ago. It's kind of silly. You can't, <laughs> you can't play... <clears throat> You can't play the victim and expect to ascend, right? You, you can't eat your ascension cake and play the victim too. Those energies are at odds with each other. Playing the victim and feeling like the rest of the world or the external reality is responsible for your happiness is not, is not a thought the vibration of that thought, the vibration of that feeling and how it resonates in your entire being does not get supported. It is not a vibration that's supported in 5D or beyond. It is commitment, Stacy, but commitment and willingness are different because the willingness speaks to, are you willing to give up the programming, the conditions that got you to create that foundation that false foundation of you in the first place where you needed to adapt to the world, but you weren't authentic to the world because that requires willingness. And I think that the, the most important thing and so my guides are always saying to me that is the right use of willpower. So when we talk about willpower, right? We have our new year's resolutions. That's why this conversation is so timely, right? We're gonna go to the gym. We're gonna do the fast. We're gonna, we're gonna 
you know, we're going to commit to um, a yoga routine. Uh, we're, you know, we're going to commit to a spiritual practice, whatever it is. And you're going to say to yourself, I have the commitment. I'm going to dedicate myself to this. I'm going to mark it in my calendar and pen rather than pencil. So I'll really show up and doing it. Okay. But the reason why those things don't hold and take up permanent residence, these changes, the, the reasons why they don't take up, you know, a, a sustaining quality in your life is because there isn't a willingness to let go of the part of yourself that needed to be that former identity, that needed to create that former foundation, that needed to create the situations, the behaviors, and the conditions for you holding yourself back from life. Are you willing to let those things go? And yes, that absolutely leads to awareness, recognition, choice, and vibration. Absolutely. But the willingness is the prologue to all of that. Because if you're not exercising the right use of willpower, and the right use of willpower is the willingness to let go of what caused the contrasting, unwelcome contradictions within you in the first place. Because if you're not willing to let those go, if you're not willing to recognize those patterns, the, the conditions that contributed to you being held back from life, then what good is all of it? You can have commitment as long as you want towards the thing that you say you're creating and you could call it willpower and all that. But if that stronger foundation that you're not willing to let go of is still very much of your part of your reality, you might be able to play a game of smoke and mirrors with yourself and say, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. And I'm going to do that. But if you're not willing to let go of those, those programs, that patterning, those conditions that contributed to you being in this place of, I got to change everything, then you're going to go back to it because chances are you've been doing it for years, decades of your life, even. And that energy has a stronghold within you. It is in your body, it's in your physiology, it's in your cells, it's in your nerves, it's in your tissues, it's in your organs. It's got a stronghold on you. And where we completely delude ourselves about change and transformation is we say we're going to do all these things, but these things are really new to us. We're committing to a new routine, you know, a new gym workout, a, a, a new yoga practice, a fasting routine. If what is so familiar to us is ingrained in our physiology, it has neural trenches in our brain, that's going to be the strongest energy within us. And whatever is the strongest energy within us wins the day. Willingness to let go of who we think we are to be, who, who we are, to be who we are meant to be. Absolutely. Yes. Does that make sense? And so when we talk about willpower, I, I really want to drive this point home. You know, willpower isn't just commitment. It's not just dedication. It's not just nose to the grindstone. The right use of willpower is the willingness to give up the former identity of you that created this need to break it all down, burn it all down, collapse it to the ground in the first place. It's, it's a quote from Hipp Hippocrates as well, I think. You know, ask the person who's, who's experiencing the healing if they're willing to give up what caused them to be the need to be healed in the first place, right? Something to that effect. <laughs> I'll, I'll find that quote and put it up. So does this make sense? And can you see how the willingness is actually probably the most important thing here? Because otherwise, it's just kind of, I hate to say it, but mental masturbation. You know, we're playing with these concepts in our mind of how it could be. And the mind is very powerful. And the mind will do whatever directives we give it. But even when you're, and I can definitely attest to this, and maybe many of you can, you know, trying new things, reinventing myself, if in my mind, there's still more of those thoughts that cling to the old version of me more than the thoughts that cling to the new version of me, guess what energy is going to win the day? 
it's just a fact. I, this isn't even esoteric. This isn't even mystical. It's just a fucking fact. Okay. As you're describing it, I feel the frequency of willpower in a whole new way. Yeah. Yes. The right use of willpower. And so when my spirit team and bless them all because they will say shit over and over to me until I get it. They'll beat me over the head with it. And that sometimes I need that because I'm a Capricorn and I'm very stubborn. <laughs> um, and so they'll say it to me over and over again and try to show me examples. Like things will happen and they'll say, see, this is what we mean. And then I'll be like, oh, okay. The right use of willpower. I get it now. It's the willingness. It's the willingness to give up what caused these conditions, these, this patterning, this programming in the first place. And it's the willingness. Here's, here's the best part. Are you listening? It's the willingness. The willingness to release yourself of the pattern that starts the whole cascade of having greater awareness and self-recognition, making higher and better choices, and moving into a higher vibration of you. It's the willingness that catalyzes all of that. Because when we really start with the willingness of, all right, I'm ready to let it go. I see how the situation that I'm in is untenable. This is not sustaining. It is creating disharmonious frequencies in and around me, in all aspects of my life. I feel at war with myself constantly. My inner reality is in turmoil. So I have the willingness now to let this go. I have the willingness now to develop a sense of equanimity, peace within and peace without. Because when you have peace within you, the outer world follows because the outer world is just a mirror for your inner reality. And I love the word equanimity. I use it all the time in, in my group, Lotus Throne Initiation, because when we can bless ourselves enough to know that, and this is going to be hard to hear for some of you, especially in light of what I'm talking about. Maybe it won't make sense. That there's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with you. There is nothing wrong with you. Are there things that you would like to improve? Sure, absolutely. There is nothing wrong with you. You don't need fixing. It's not about that. It is about recognizing where you are creating conditions in your life based on patterning that maybe you put into place because you thought you had no other choice at the time. You couldn't have the 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 cognitive awareness, because a lot of these patterns and programs that we put in place were done when we were tiny humans and we didn't know the world. We didn't know ourselves. We didn't have the cognitive ability to be able to see the big picture of what's really going on, to understand that we had higher and better choices available to us. So forgiving yourself, letting go of this idea of I should have known better. Because that is the thing that keeps you from willingness. It actually keeps you in a place where you want to keep punishing yourself instead of doing something about it. And how do I know? Because I've fucking done it over and over again. And, and one of the patterns that I uncovered was patterning that I had since I was a very little girl that contributed to con con creating conditions where I had to get myself in trouble because when I got into trouble, I could be recognized. I would be seen. So that solved my problem of uh, being rejected. That solved my problem of being abandoned. That solved my problem of being invisible as a little girl. If I got into trouble, well, you're going to see me now. And so into my adult life, this pattern, which is unconscious, and that's how unconscious pattern patterns work. And I would argue that in a sense, most of the healing that we do as adults is inner child healing. Because we're finally in a place where we can recognize these patterns, these programs that we've, you know, 
conducted our entire lives by. We created functionality in the world through these patterns for decades of our being. And when we're in this place of being able to finally see it, we can realize, as I did, my adult life, I would con continue to create situations where I got in trouble. If I, you know, would, would get in trouble and punish myself for it, that replaced my, my parents' need to punish me. So it was like a way of showing myself to myself which is weird and confusing, but that's what I was doing and that's what I figured out. I also figured out that through my patterning, it was creating conditions where, um, I did a TikTok about this last night, um, where I was creating conditions where, you know, I'd get myself into trouble so that I could bail myself out, save myself, rescue myself as a really fucked up way and toxic way to prove worth and value to myself. Like if I was someone who could be the rescuer, the protector, someone who's constantly there to bail myself out, then that was a way of proving my to myself that I was valuable and worthy. Holy shit, <laughs> right? And incredibly sobering recognition, but you know what? I'm really glad. I'm really glad that I know it because now I have the awareness I can recognize the pattern and I have the willingness to, to break the pattern and, and break this destiny because we create it. Destinies for ourselves, emotional destinies, mental destinies for ourselves and destinies in, in, in that sense are just unbroken patterns. So I have the awareness now and the willingness to break that pattern, okay? And how do you do it? I make higher and better choices than I would have before when this pattern was unconscious to me. And guess what that's gonna do? It's gonna put me in a higher vibration of being. It already has, that's already shifted uh, greatly. And so when I say the last 14 months of my life has been kind of a hell, that's true. But it's also yielded a lot of gifts in the garbage because now I know, now I know myself better than I ever have before. And it's incredibly liberating. Is it painful? Yes. Because breaking with and crumbling down or burning down an old foundation of you, where you, we, we have so much attached to our identity, our, our personality, our personal reality, to the degree that that breaks down, we go through a grieving process. We just do. Even if that version of us wasn't very wholesome to what we want to create, it's a grieving process nonetheless. Because it's something you knew, something was familiar to you, and now it's gone. And that's just natural. It's a natural thing for us as humans to experience. But we don't want to get hung up in that space because then we go back into victim mentality. Well, what, who am I now? What do I do now? You choose higher and better. That's what you do now in light of that awareness and self-recognition. And when you choose higher and better, you're going to see more of those opportunities to choose higher and better in all key areas of your life. That's how it works, ladies. That's how it works. You have to be in the energy of doing it. It can't be this lofty goal of, all right, tomorrow I'm gonna choose higher and better. That means nothing, that means nothing, that means nothing. Tomorrow is a ghost land. Where are you choosing higher and better now? You've gotta put yourself in the vibration. You know, there's so much talk in the law of attraction and manifesting that, you know, just be that energy now and it sounds so ungrounded and flighty and airy fairy and woo woo because the the how isn't really described in that it's all about now there is nothing else there is nothing else all else is illusion future past they are ghost lands they do not exist they are constructs of the mind in 3d linear time space that's it there's only now and when you put yourself in the energy of choosing higher and better for yourself now, hopefully you can implement the God choice framework when you're choosing, then you're in the energy, then you're in the vibration. Simply by making that higher and better choice, doing it, committing to it, dedicating to it, sticking with it, you're in that vibration. So everything that is a match to that vibrational bandwidth will show up 
meaning opportunities, synchronicities, serendipities that also give you the chance to make higher and better choices, okay? Fantastic stuff, right? I wanted, I wanted to make this as simple as I possibly can for you. If I haven't, please let me know. <laughs> no woman or man ever steps in the same river twice, for it's not the same river and she's not the same woman. Very nice. Very nice, Stacy. Thank you. Eleanor says, yes, the so lands. Absolutely. So does this make sense? How are, how are you going to use this? I'd love for you to tell me if you're here live, that's for a reason. How are you going to use this information that I shared with you here today? What are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it now? Because that's all there is. You can say there's tomorrow, you know, is... <laughs> Is also, you know, trying to kick yourself or, or lament the past. You should have done this, could have done that. That doesn't matter either. That is wasted energy. It goes nowhere. And you're giving it an incredible amount of energetic real estate within you when you lament the past, grieve the past, or keep putting your energy towards the future. I'll be happy tomorrow. <laughs> you think so, huh? <laughs> Good luck with that. Let me know how that works out. Now. That's all you've got. And it is an incredible, vast opportunity and space for transformation, for reinvention, for renewal, for change. And with what I've given you here, which I've held nothing back, I've, I've given it to you. What will you do with it? And chances are you already knew much of this. But hopefully I put enough passion behind my words that you will, it puts the fire behind your fanny to do something with it now, right? I'm powerfully stepping into leadership and my power. Yes, and you're launching a beautiful program, Stacy. How lovely. Running to a class, chewing this over, took notes and quotes. Awesome, Lorna. Mwah. Many blessings. So if you're watching live, if you're going to watch the replay, um, let me know your thoughts on this. I would love, love, love to know. And if you want to work with reinvention and really be guided in a very personalized way, you know, I have this, this incredible opportunity where when we are in group programs together, I get to still work with you, you know, and, and in a very customized and personalized way for what is going on in your life. So it's great to attend these lives. It's great to have free access to these things. But if you want to apply this and be guided in your life so that it makes sense for you, where, you're, where you are, where you're at, and what you want to do with this information, I have two amazing opportunities to work with me. So if you want to learn how to take this information and affect the physiology of your body using somatics, affecting the vagus nerve, which is the largest cranial nerve in your body, um, helping to change and regulate a dysregulated nervous system. Um, that's what Momentum of Flow is all about. And we have three calls a month. We do an ebb call where we work on how do we deal with this shadow? How do we deal with the fact that as adults, we're still doing inner child healing through most of our adult lives? That's our next call. That's on the 9th. And we have a flow call, which talks about how to embody your desires without rejecting them. That's the focus of our desire calls, our flow calls. And then we have a somatic movements call every month. That's momentum of flow. It's 597. It goes until May of 2023 with three calls every month. Um, and we have a private Facebook group. Then there is Women Walking the Phoenix Path, which starts on February 8th. This is an eight-week program. It is for women who are bound and determined and have the willingness, the willingness in light of what I've talked about today, the right use of willpower to apply towards reinvention. And a lot of us, and I know who you are and you know who you are, who follow me, who, you know, look at my offers, who um, have commented on the things that I've shared on YouTube, on Facebook, even on TikTok, you are ready for reinvention. Do you mean it? Because that's what this program is all about. So 
I'm leaving that here for today. I want to thank you all for being here. This has been lovely sharing this with you. I hope that you have received so many gold nuggets from this and really sit with this. Watch this again. You know, call up your bestie and watch this together. This is going to be my YouTube channel. Um, this is where we're at, ladies. Reinvention. And you can do it. I've done it many times. It's not as scary as you think, really. <laughs> it can be at first until you're in the energy of it. But when you're looking at reinvention from I'm over here and I'm going to reinvent myself over there, it's scary. But once you're in the energy and you realize that it is just step by step, it's just being with what is. This is something I'm constantly impress impressing, impressing on the women in Lotus Throne initiation with me. Like all you have the power to do, really, the only control you have is to be with what is right in front of you. That's all you have to do is be with what is right in front of you. But you have to give all of your attention and focus and energy to it. And when you do that, it really is one step at a time. And it can be so incredible, so liberating. So thank you, ladies. I do love you all. Thank you for being here. And um, I would love to see you in either Women Walking the Phoenix Path or Momentum of Flow. I'm going to have the links for you to learn more and sign up in the comments here. Love and peace. You're welcome. Bye-bye.